and this is going to be chapter 9 introduction introducing the junctional rhythms uh, objectives uh, discuss the origin of junctional rhythms recall the components of an electrical conduction system identify premature junctional contractions including EKG characteristics identify a junctional escape rhythm including EKG characteristics Identifying accelerated junctional rhythm, including EKG characteristics. Identifying a junctional tachycardia rhythm, including, including EKG characteristics. And discuss the clinical significance of junctional rhythms. Origin of junctional rhythms. Rhythms are classified according to the heart structure in which they begin or their site of origin. The sinoatrial node in and the atria fail to generate an impulse. If this failure develops, the secondary pacemaker side of the heart, the AV junction, will assume the role of pacing the heart. So if the sinoatrial node fails, your secondary backup, the AV node, will take over as the pacemaker side of the heart. Rhythms that are initiated in the area of the AV junction are called junctional rhythms. Although junctional rhythms are not considered to be lethal or life-threatening, you should recall the patient assessment that patient assessment is the most important indicator of clinical significance. If your patient's heart rate is very slow and running at the junction, you may have to treat them as if they were in bradycardia or bradycardic rhythm. Components of the electrical conduction system of the heart. The electrical impulse originates in the sinoatrial node, or the SA node, travels through the interatrial pathway or internodal pathways. This allows it to move from the SA node to the AV node. At the AV node, you get a brief pause where it goes to the bundle of his, the right bundle branch, and the left bundle branch. Carry it on to the actual Purkinje fibers, and the Purkinje fibers place the electrical stimulus into the muscle tissue itself. Each one of these has an intrinsic rate. <coughs> Pardon me. 60 to 100 beats per minute for the SA node. 40 to 60 beats per minute for the AV node. And 20 to 40 beats per minute for the ventricular muscle. Firing rate of the SA node is 60 to 100, AV node 40 to 60, and Purkinje or muscular ventricular muscle 20 to 40. Um, the primary pacemaker site is the sinoatrial node, the secondary pacemaker site is the atrioventricular node, and the third pacemaker site is the Purkinje network or the ventricular muscle, and the intrinsic rates are shown. Sinoatrial node 60 to 100, AV node or junctional rhythms, which we're going to be talking about here, 40 to 60, and then the ventricular muscle is 20 to 40. If you'll notice, as we go lower in the heart, the rate goes lower as well. P waves in junctional rhythms. Normal P waves are seen before each QRS if it's coming from a sinus rhythm. Impulses with junctional rhythm is traveling away from the positive electrodes the P waves will be inverted or negative. The P waves can be hidden in the QRS or following the QRS as well. The premature junctional contraction or PJC are initiated from a single site in the AV junction and arise earlier than the next anticipated complex of the underlying rhythm. If SA node depolarization by an ectopic beat, a non-compensatory pause occurs and an underlying rhythm is interrupted. A PJC can also cause compensatory pause, a pause that occurs after an ectopic beat, and underlying rhythm is uninterrupted. Premature junctional complexes. So how we're going to identify these is, again, this is going to be the funny looking beats. So it's going to throw in a funny looking beat that's a little out of rhythm with the rest of the, of the EKG. And that funny looking beat is not going to have a P wave or it will have an inverted P wave. So whenever we're looking at the overall five-step process of this, rate is going to be the underlying rhythm plus the PJC. 
What is the rhythm? It's usually regular except for when the PJC occurs, and these are going to be just like the PACs that we talked about earlier. The P waves are going to be present if it is a sinus B. Uh, but for the actual PJC, they're going to be inverted or absent, or may appear after the QRS. What is the PR interval? And it's usually less than 0.12 seconds if the P wave precedes the QRS, and if no P wave, and absent if no P wave precedes the QRS. So the ones that are missing the P waves, you aren't going to see a P wave. If it's inverted <coughs> or it is present, it may be less than 0.12 seconds, which is a pretty quick PR interval. Uh, do all the QRSs look alike? Yes, and most of the time they are less than 0.12 seconds. So we're going to identify this by the funny looking beat that has no P wave. And as we are taking a look at these, first of all, we do rate. If this one is actually perfused, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 times 10 is 80 beats per minute. Step two in this, is it regular? And we can see some irregularities here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this so we can take a better look at it. Right here, this beat looks out of, out of turn. Everything else is rhythmic except for this beat. If we'll take notice to this beat, it does not have a P wave. So there is no discernible P wave on this QRS complex whatsoever. So 80 beats per minute. It's occasionally irregular. Are there P waves? There are for everyone else except for this guy right here. This one here came from the junction because the only thing that is present is a QRS. It is absent a sinus originating B or a P wave. So a PJC is identified by a beat that is out of turn or a funny looking beat that is pretty narrow. It's less than 0.12. <coughs> that has no P wave. A premature junctional complex or contraction or PJC is less common than a PAC or a PVC. As with all ectopic beats, it is easier to identify PJCs if the rhythm is sinus or bradycardic. When interrupting PJCs, you must also determine the underlying rhythm. When interpreting, now my apologies, PJCs, you must also determine the underlying rhythm. So we're going to need to know where the rhythm's coming from, and we're going to need to know how many of these extra beats or these premature beats that this patient is having. A junctional escape rhythm. The SA node may fail to generate an impulse, or if it or if the rate falls below that of the AV node, then the AV node will assume the role of the pacemaker. This ability is, a, is kind of a safety feature so that you have a backup pacemaker site. Intrinsic rates of the AV node is 40 to 60 beats per minute, and we've said that quite a few times during the slide sets. A junctional escape beat, an isolated junctional beat occurs, and this is going to be one funny looking beat without an OP wave. A junctional escape rhythm. A series of junctional escape beats occur, sometimes term, termed as junctional bradycardia, when the rate is less than 40 beats per minute. Now, we term things bradycardic whenever they are slower than their intrinsic rate. And that's what we've done so far with the sinus bradycardia. If it's less than 60 beats per minute, we consider that a bradycardic rhythm. In this case, since we're talking about the junction and the intrinsic rate is 40 to 60, if it's less than 40 beats per minute, we can consider that a junctional bradycardia. Causes of this are SA nodal disease, hypoxia, increased parasympathetic tone. Um, that would be from multiple causes, but increased parasympathetic tone, cardiac drugs, or complete heart block. Junctional escape beats. Uh, whenever you have an adjunctional escape beat or an adjunctional escape rhythm, 
the intrinsic rate is that of the junction, 40 to 60 beats per minute. If the P waves are there, they're probably going to be inverted. Generally, the rhythm is nice and regular. Are the P waves present? Yeah, they're either inverted or absent. And they may appear before or after the QRS. Because the QRS is no longer running, or I'm sorry, the sinoatrial node is no longer running your rhythm. It is the AV node that is taking over as a primary pacemaker. What is the PR interval? And this is usually less than 0.12, definitely less than 0.20 seconds. Uh, do all the QRSs look alike? Yes, and they're generally less than 0.12 in duration or three small boxes. So this is a junctional escape rhythm. So let's do the five step process on it. <clears throat> so there's five beats there, five times 10, rate is 50. Is it nice and regular? And it looks pretty regular as well. So I'm gonna consider it regular. Step three, are there P waves? Yes, they are, but they are inverted or headed the wrong direction. These things should be upright and they are inverted. They are uniform, but they are coming before the QRS and they are inverted. Um, the next step on this is going to be the PR interval. The PR interval is, is pretty tight here. <clears throat> there is an, it is about three boxes, which is at 0.12, and the QRS. What does the QRS look like? And it's nice and tight as well, which is about at two small boxes, or 0 0.08 in duration. For the QRS. So a junctional escape rhythm is identified by one, its intrinsic rate, and by two, its inverted or absent P waves. An accelerated junctional rhythm. Now, again, the intrinsic rate of the AV node is 40 to 60 beats per minute. So if it's greater than 60 beats per minute, we're going to consider it an accelerated junctional rhythm. <clears throat> Causes of this are going to be hypoxia digitalis intoxication, inferior wall MI, and rheumatic fever can all cause an accelerated junctional rhythm. So what's the rate on step one? 60 to 100 beats per minute. Is everything regular? Everything is nice and regular. Are the P waves present? This is going to be the same indication as our previous one that was a junctional rhythm. The P waves are either inverted or absent, and they may appear before or after the QRS. What is the PR interval? It's usually pretty tight. Definitely less than 0 0.20, but more often less than 0 0.12. Do the QRSs look alike? The answer is yes, and they are generally less than 0 0.12 in duration. So you identify an accelerated junctional rhythm, one, by its inverted or absent P waves, and two, by its intrinsic rate being over 60 beats per minute, or that of the rate of the AV node. So an accelerated junctional rhythm, let's do the six second strip method. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times 10, 70 beats per minute. It's all nice and regular. That would be step two. Step three, we're looking for P waves. There are none. There are no P waves. Do we see a PR interval? Non-discernible due to the fact that there's no P waves. Is there a QRS complex? Yes. Is it less than 0.12? Yes, it is. So how we identify an accelerated junctional rhythm is a QRS complex that has no P waves associated with it or has inverted P waves associated with it and the rhythm is greater than 60 beats per minute. Junctional tachycardia. Rhythm that arises from the AV junctional tissue at a rate of 100 to 180 beats per minute. If observed to start or end abruptly, is referred to as a proxismal rhythm. <clears throat> it may be indistinguishable from an SVT or tachycardic rhythm. Causes. Underlying ischemic heart disease, frequent ingestion of stimulants, Anxiety, hypoxia, medications such as digitalis or rheumatic heart disease. Treatment aimed at identifying and, and treating the underlying cause of the dysrhythmia. So a junctional tachycardia 
if we'll look down to part three here, if visible or inverted, it may appear before or after the QRS. So again, there's not going to be any P wave or the P waves are going to be inverted. And the second part is going to be greater than 100 beats per minute. That's why we're identifying it as a tachycardic rhythm. So step one, 100 to 180 beats per minute. Is it regular? Yes, it is. Is there P waves before every QRS? If they're there, they're probably going to be inverted. And the Puru, are they upright? They are not upright. They're inverted. What is the length of the PR interval? Usually about 0.12 seconds, but as long as it's less than 0 0.20, it's still within normal limits. Five, do all the QRS complexes look alike? Yes. What is the length of the QRS complexes? And that's going to be three small boxes or 0.12. And this is here is a junctional tachycardia. I'll show you how we're going to identify it. One, two, three, four. Five, this is step one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten times ten is one hundred beats per minute. There, step two, is it regular? And the answer is this is nice and regular. Step three, are there any P waves? And if we'll notice on these, there is no discernible P wave whatsoever. So this is a junctional tachycardia identified by the rate greater than or 100 beats per minute or greater <clears throat> and no discernible P waves. Uh, <clears throat> part 4 in this is there any PR interval and there's no P wave to have a PR interval and step 5 what does a QRS look like? QRS looks pretty good in this is about two small boxes again starting from the Q wave the end of the S wave we have about two small boxes there so 0 0.08 in duration. So again, identifying junctional tachycardia, one by its rate, 100 beats per minute or better, and two by it not having a discernible P wave. I cannot find a P wave anywhere on that strip. This is the end of chapter nine, introduction to junctional rhythms.